My name is Dr. Ann Zeller, and I am a member of the Department of Anthropology at the University of Waterloo. I am a physical anthropologist whose specialty is primate behavior, and I've been studying free-ranging and semi-free-ranging macaques since 1973. This particular program is to tell you about my sabbatical research trip to Indonesian Borneo to study wild Macaca fascicularis, or crab-eating macaques. My first field experience was in Gibraltar in 1973, where I went to study Macaca sylvanus, or Barbary macaques. The local Gibraltarians often call these Barbary or, or Gibraltar apes because they don't have any tail. I was interested in looking at their communication patterns. I wanted to study their facial communication and to look at individual differences in facial communication. I also wanted to see whether there were differences in how families communicated with their faces. I continued this research with Macaca fuscata, or the Japanese macaque, in Texas in a 50-acre enclosure there called Arashiyama West. Another thing which had caught my attention during this time was the problem of violence by adults towards infants. Theoretically speaking, the violence of adults towards infants has often been considered to be an adaptive phenomenon. In other words, Males that come in and take over groups frequently kill the infants in the groups, thus reducing the fitness of the previous male by killing off his offspring and encouraging the females to become sexually receptive quickly so that he can start producing his own offspring. This has become a common subject for study now, partly because the situation in colonies has shown that there is a fair amount of violence by adults towards infants. There is a lot of colony rearing of monkeys for research now, partly since India stopped sending rhesus macaques caught in the wild to the United States for research because they disagreed with their role in defense research. Therefore, Macaca fascicularis, or crab-eating macaques from Southeast Asia, are being bred in quite large numbers in colonies in the United States and even in Canada. I wanted to study this particular species in the wild in order to see if there was as much violence by adults towards infants in the wild as in captivity. If there was not, this seemed to me to argue against the theoretical interpretation of this as a genetically based adaptive behavior. Rather, it seemed to suggest that there were environmental conditions in captivity which might have been causing this type of violence by adults towards infants. In order to begin this research project, I went to Monkey Jungle in near Miami, Florida, where they have a 10-acre enclosure with Macaca fascicularis in it. I wanted to do this because I wanted to train my eye in how to see these animals in the forest. You can't just go to the forest and expect to see animals. You have to train your eye because they have various camouflage patterns, they have various sizes, um, they utilize different parts of the forest. Uh, for example, you might want to know when you look at a monkey how old it is. And unless you have some experience with captive animals where you know the age and you can look at the animal and see how big it is, it's very difficult to tell sometimes in the wild, especially with younger animals. I also wanted an opportunity to listen to the kinds of sounds they made and to interpret them and to look at their types of facial gestures. In 1988, I was finally ready to go to the field. In August of that year, I went to Indonesian Borneo, which is a large island in the north part of the country of Indonesia. This is a fabulous place to do primate research. There are many types of primates there, prosimians, various types of monkeys, such as macaques and langurs, and apes, including gibbons and orangutans. A number of people have done field research there. Among them is Dr. Barute Galdikas, who has been working with orangutans for over 20 years. She started studying wild orangutans, and as part of the agreement with the Indonesian government, she also began to work on rehabilitating orangutans to the wild. The Indonesian government some years ago made it illegal for private citizens to own orangutans and confiscated all the captive animals. Many of the younger ones were then sent to rehabilitation camps to learn to live in the wild again. This is very difficult for some of them because their mothers were shot when they were captured and they don't know anything about what to eat, how to avoid danger, how to make nests, or any of the other factors that are important in life there. She has been working with rehabilitating these orangutans for over 15 years, as well as working on her own research on the wild animals. She has established a camp at Tanzan Puting National Park where she and a staff of about 20 to 30 Indonesians work with rehabilitating the animals and on doing her particular type of research. She invited me to come and study Macaca fascicularis when I wanted to, to do this research and I was very grateful for this invitation. 
In order to get to this particular park, you have to fly in over what's left of the rainforest of Borneo. The logging has been very destructive to the rainforest, and many areas have been completely cleared, which is very difficult for the animals that live there. The orangutans are particularly badly affected by the logging because not only are the trees that they live on brought down, but it becomes more difficult for them to get from one place to another. You had then to go up the river for six hours in a small